In the episode one video of my Easy Bake series, I made a very hearty whole grain sourdough bread. If you don't want that heavy a bread, if you want something lighter, there are a few simple things you can do differently to accomplish this. That's what this video is all about. I'm going to whip through these few things fairly quickly. And I think you'll get a lot more out of this video if you've already watched the episode one video. First off, you can make the dough wetter. For the most part, a wetter dough will produce a more open crumb, bigger holes in the bread. That's part of the appeal of the no knead bread recipe. It's easy to do with white flour, but let's see if we can use the same 100% whole grain flour that you saw in the episode one video, but open it up some just by making the dough wetter. I'm starting with the same two cups of water as before. Mixing in a blob of whole grain starter. Mix in some whole grain flour. Add one and a half teaspoons of salt. Now mix in more flour. To get to the stage where the dough is fairly stiff but still mixes easily with a whisk. Now it's important to stop here and let the dough rest for 10 to 15 minutes to give the grain time to absorb the water because that alone will change the consistency of the dough. Now after the rest period, continue adding more flour. I just want to add enough additional flour to get the dough to about here. I hope you're able to tell the difference in the consistency of the dough between the first loaf I made in the episode one video and this one. This dough is softer and a fair bit easier to work with. I don't even have to use my hands. I can just use the whisk to knead. But because it is a lot wetter, it's going to be a lot stickier. So if you do use your hands to knead it, make sure you wet your fingers well. Now I'm going to do this stretch and fold uh, process uh, about two more times. So you want to give it about 10 seconds of this, cover it, come back in 10 minutes and do that again, and then repeat that cycle one more time and we'll have a nice smooth consistency dough. Now I'll do another stretch and fold. Now for the third and final stretch and fold. It might not be easy to visually tell the difference in the consistency of this dough versus the episode one dough, but it does get a lot easier to gauge by feel how you want it once you've done this a few times. And I think you'll see how much wetter this dough is when we shape it for the second proofing at the end of the day. All right, it's only been about nine hours since we mixed up the dough, but as you can hopefully see, it's risen nicely and it's ready to shape for the final short proof before baking. I'm going to flour up the proofing basket. Put a little bran in there too. And then flour the working surface here.
Now here's the downside to this wetter dough approach. Wetter dough can be a little tricky to work with. This is wetter than the previous dough. It's not as wet as it can be. You can go even a lot wetter than this. But this is about how I usually bake bread. Just have to work kind of quickly. Use a fair amount of flour. Try to do this in front of the camera. Just plop it in the basket. It's not pretty, but it'll work. And then, as before, I'll put a little bit more flour around the edges. And let it proof for about an hour. After an hour in the proofing basket, it's ready to go into the oven. And into the 500 degree preheated Romertoff. It can be kind of difficult to score wet dough. <clears throat> Sometimes I don't even bother, but I'll give it a try here. Looks like it worked okay. And I'll bake it for 15 minutes with the lid on and then about another 20 minutes with the lid off. Just done. 200 degrees exactly. Okay, we'll give this smiley face bread about an hour to cool before we slice it open. Alrighty, let's check this out. Yeah, it's more open crumb, right? Think so? Sure. It's going to be a little bit lighter bread. Yeah. This is what I'm typically looking for on a, in a loaf of whole grain bread. Another thing you can do to lighten up your bread is to sift most of the coarse bran out of the flour. Bran acts like tiny knives which cuts the gluten strands in the dough so the dough doesn't trap the bubbles from fermentation and rise as well as it could without the bran. You can get a whole lot of bran out of the flour by running it once through a sifter like this. This is a 30 mesh screen which means it has 30 squares per inch, and you can get a bit more uh, bran out of the flour by running it through a couple of times. Then if you want a super fine flour, you can then run it through a 50 mesh screen. Then you'll end up with a high extraction flour, which behaves more like white flour, but with most of the highly nutritious wheat germ left behind. So it's still a whole lot healthier than white flour. Let's see how the bread turns out if we just sift it twice through the 30 mesh screen. After running about six cups of flour through the sifter once, we end up with what looks like about a cup of bran. So let's uh, try running it through another time and see if we get more bran out. And after a second time through, we end up with just a pretty small amount of bran. I think this is probably not much more than a couple of tablespoons. So once through is probably sufficient. And now we have a really light flour that we can use to make a lighter loaf of bread. 
I should also mention that this whole process of sifting took about five minutes. We're going to make the bread as we have before. This is from the same 50-50 blend of red fife and turkey red wheat that we've used before, just sifted. But again, you can do this with any whole grain flour. Water. Starter. Start adding flour. Salt. And keep mixing in the flour until we get to the consistency we want. Let it rest for 10 minutes. Then either finish kneading it all at once or do a series of stretch and folds, which is what I always do. This is the third stretch and fold before we let it proof for the day. Or if it was the evening, we would let it proof overnight. <clears throat> now we're ready for the short second rise. This dough is pretty wet. Check back in an hour. Alrighty, it's ready to go in the oven. Okay, it's been in the oven for 15 minutes, so now I'm gonna take the lid off for another 20, 25 minutes. Looks pretty done. I'm not even gonna use a thermometer. I can pretty much tell from looking at it, it's done. And uh, another thing you can do is wrap the bottom, and if it makes this kind of hollow sound, it's done. So I'll just let it cool and slice into it. I kind of expect this loaf to have a more open crumb. It rose a little bit more than the last couple loaves and you've got this nice ear where it opened up. And in fact, I hope you can see that it is definitely a more open crumb. It's got bigger holes, and that's just from taking out the bran. Finally, let's see what happens if we add just about a cup or a cup and a half of white flour to our bread and the rest whole wheat and everything else the same. It's super easy to do, and you still end up with a loaf that's two thirds or three quarters whole grain, which is still way more whole grain than what's in most whole grain breads you find in a store or even a lot of artisan bakeries. We'll go through the same process you've seen a few times now. Two cups of water, a little starter. This is a white flour starter. Now we'll put in a, a cup of white flour. It's actually a little bit of a, a heaping cup, but that's all the white flour we're gonna put in. And 
and the rest will be the 50-50 blend of Turkey Red and Red 5 whole grain flour. None of the bran has been removed. Salt, one and a half teaspoons. And when we get it close to the consistency we want, I'm gonna cover it and let it rest for about 10 minutes. So after the 10 minute rest, the dough is pretty close to how I want it. So I don't think I'm gonna add any more flour. I'm just gonna go straight into the uh, stretch and fold thing. Here's the third and final stretch and fold before we let it proof all day. All right, here we go. The dough has risen well. It's nice and poofy. All right, we'll give it the usual customary hour to do its second short proof before we bake it. It's been an hour. Definitely looks like the bread's ready to go in the oven. Been 15 minutes, go another 20 or so at 500. All right, the bread's done. So we'll let it cool for about an hour or so. All right, let's check it out. I love about bread baking. I always look forward to seeing how the bread's going to turn out. I think this is probably the most open crumb of all the lot so far. And this is, like I said, just a little bit over a cup of white flour, so it's mostly whole grain. And it's still going to be a fairly light, moist loaf considering how much whole grain is in it. There are even a couple more things I'll mention you can do to lighten up your whole grain bread. You can add some vital wheat gluten to the dough. I've never done this, but I've heard it works well. Also, if you're baking with sourdough starter as your leavening, you can spike the dough with just a little bit of commercial instant yeast. Even just an eighth of a teaspoon will make a significant difference. Some bread book recipes call for this, and some bakeries do it too. It's an easy tweak if you want the nutrition and flavor of whole grains and sourdough but a less dense loaf. Of course, you can also experiment with any combination of these various techniques. For example, if you sift out some of the bran and add some white flour and keep the dough fairly wet, you'll likely end up with a well-risen loaf that's full of pretty large holes, which a lot of people really like. The range of options you have is really pretty huge. 
In the next of our Easy Bake series, we'll do just that. We'll combine a few of these techniques to bake a loaf of bread with much more open crumb, but still some of the nutrition and flavor profile that whole grain provides. As always, the main thing is to have fun with your bread baking. And don't worry if your bread results aren't initially what you'd hoped for. It's part of the learning process and the downside risk is minimal anyway. So have fun with it and let us know how it goes for you. Who makes the best bread, Gray? Fafa. Who's Fafa? You. That's right. <laughs>